How's it going guys? Another amazing day during car week. Today we are driving the new Aston Martin DB11 and also apparently getting behind the wheel of the DBX707. It's been so nice having the 600 LT out here. RWB, R34, Countach. Oh wow, look at that. It looks like the entire Rolls-Royce global press fleet is just sitting here in the parking lot. That's wild. Look at that, a new DB12. That is gorgeous. And then look at that, casually, a Remock Nevera just sitting right here and a singer. Two Rolls-Royce Spectres sitting next to each other. The new all-electric coupe. Those are pretty. Nice 812 GTS pulling up. Cool spec. Spectre rolling out dead silent. Look how big that is. The taillights are absolutely gorgeous. EB12 rolling through. That is one good looking car. So we've got one sitting right here. Aston Martin says it's 80% new from the DB11. From the front end, you can see you've got a massive front grille, very much enlarged from the DB11. And if you look at them side by side, it is a much prettier car to look at. The side is pretty similar. This vent here has been enlarged a little bit, but the radical difference is the vehicle's interior. Pretty crazy to see all of the different color Rolls Royces next to each other. We've got the new Ghosts, a Cullen in here, and then the Spectre in a very unique spec. I do really like what they've done with the headlights on the Spectre. Such an imposing looking vehicle. Cullinans everywhere as well. Look at the flake in the paint of this. That is crazy. It's absolutely sparkling in the sun, that yellow pinstripe. So talk about an unbelievable spec. It's Galileo blue over Galileo blue. That absolutely pops. Look at the spec on this Cullinan. I thought it was just white on white, but it's got a peony pink pinstripe. And then look at the peony pink accents in the interior. That actually looks really cool, juxtaposed against the white. Check out the jet black accents in here. Starlight headliner. Under the hood of the DB12 is a four liter twin turbocharged V8 sourced by AMG, but with bigger turbochargers than before. Oh, that sounds pretty good. Making 671 horsepower and 590 pound feet of torque. Zero to 60 in three and a half seconds. It makes 143 horsepower more than the previous generation V8 DB11 which is pretty impressive in terms of an improvement. I believe a 34% increase in power, and apparently it drives entirely different. Well, this is a really pretty color, but unfortunately they're running two hours behind on the event, so we don't have enough time and are gonna have to bail. I am actually pretty bummed. I thought this was a press event with media cars and whatnot. I guess it's a customer drive, and we showed up for a 10.30 time slot, and they're running two hours behind somehow, so. I'm not gonna wait around two hours. We're gonna head out and find something else to do. But before we continue, I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, OBD11. Why take your car into a dealership for an expensive diagnosis when you can simply do it yourself? OBD11 is an officially licensed smart vehicle assistant that allows you to diagnose your BMW or Volkswagen Group vehicle and also customize some of its driving functions. It's super easy to use. Just connect the device to your vehicle's OBD2 port, download an app, and connect via Bluetooth. You can then read out codes to see what's wrong with the car, clear them, and even share them. Using one-click apps, you can even unlock hidden features of your car and customize the driving experience by turning off certain comfort features. You can even look up and find information about the vehicle, such as year and VIN number. Pro users have access to adaptions, live data, SFD unlocking, and more. So head to the link in the description below to get yourself an officially licensed OBD11 for your BMW or Volkswagen Group vehicle. DB12. If anyone from Aston Martin is watching and controls the press fleet in Southern California, I would like to get my hands on a DB12. Entering Laguna Seca and a gorgeous 959 passing by. Home of the corkscrew. Just parked at Laguna Seca. Got an awesome spot here and look, a fellow 600 LT. Seeing these absolutely everywhere. Huracan Storado parked in the dirt. And look at that, M5 wagon. Here we are, guys. Here's a Ferrari I have never seen before until this year at Monterey Car Week, the 575 GTZ. It's a Zagato bodied car, and they only made six of these in the entire world. Look at the rear end. I mean, it almost doesn't look like a Ferrari, but obviously the interior is very, 599 and 612 Scaglietti. What do you guys think of the front end of this? How wild is this Lotus single-seater race car? I love the tape over the headlights in the perfect 
pound sign. Look how small this is. This must be so intense to drive. How cool is the livery on this 935 slant nose? Instead of headlights where they'd normally be, it's a bunch of vent work. That is really cool. And then the headlights are down below. Look at that to remove those massive center lock wheels. That is gorgeous. How crazy is this? I bet a lot of people didn't know that Porsche and Abarth made a car together. This is the Abarth 356. That is really cool. I am in love with the Carrera RS. Such a pretty car. And then over here, a 300 SL Gullwing and a beautiful GT40. Look at this, is this Horatio's personal car? Beautiful 962. The livery on that, I love that color. And look, they've taken the rear canopy off so we can take a look at that engine. Look at the carbon fiber intakes on either side. Check this out. This is the track only T50S. It's still got that Cosworth V12 that revs to 12,100 RPM. In fact, they've got the V12 right here, but it's got more horsepower and 900 kilograms of downforce, 754 horsepower, central seating position, but no passenger seats. And this thing, the craziest spec on the entire car is that it weighs just 1,850 pounds. They've opened up half of it here so you can see into the inner workings. That is unbelievable. This is almost not believable, but that was only six and a half thousand RPM that he was revving to. If it went to 12, I think everyone would have just died instantly. Look at the interior of the T50S. I mean, every single thing has a purpose. They haven't glorified it or beautified it in any way. Look at the switch gear right here. There's nothing on the steering wheel to tell you what these individual buttons do. That is wild. Apparently, it has a gearbox based on a MotoGP bike. Now, this is the road-going T50 3.9 liter naturally aspirated V12 that revs to 12,100 RPM. 650 horsepower, central driving position. Look how insane the interior is. That beautiful analog, almost McLaren-esque steering wheel, manual transmission, analog instrument cluster. Those seats are spectacular. And one of the coolest parts, other than of course, that Cosworth V12, is the fan at the back for additional downforce. And just as a stylistic element, that is crazy. So we're here with Mark from Gordon Murray Automotive, here inside the T50. Can we take a look at the key real quick? Because that is, I've never actually seen the key before. You were saying it's so shaped it's a, exactly like yeah, so the pedal box. Yeah, so it's a of the touch on the brake pedal. So if you put the machine on the pedal and on the key, it's very similar. That is very cool. Now, the central driving position, I've driven a McLaren Speedtail, but only briefly. Do you think on this car, because it's a lot smaller, is it pretty easy to get used to? It's kind of it second is. nature? Because of the height of the car, and you're so far away, you've got a lot of glass area. Yeah. It gives you a good way to position the car on the road. So when you drive in, you can see the corners of the car, so you the corner in, it's, it's an ideal position to be in. You know, you're not too far back, you can see the corners of the car, where the wings go over. Um, it's very straightforward. Yeah. yeah. It, it's actually unbelievable that you've made a car weight 2,200 pounds that's road legal. Yeah. I mean, how is that possible? Are, are there certain design philosophies or, I mean, was the whole point of the car basically to make it as light as yeah, possible? So, so Gordon's whole philosophy with all of the cars is always lightweight. You know, it's not about, you know, ultimate power. It's about the experience of driving the car and the, the lightness. So the whole car's been designed around us. Obviously the key in the pedals, the pedals are titanium pedals and they're machined, so they're not just a flat aluminium. The car is carbon fiber, um, all the panel work is carbon fiber. I think it's got a, a weight of about 150 kilos for the wow. tub and all the panels put together. Um, everything has been designed around saving weight. You know, if, if it doesn't, hasn't got a function on the car, it's generally not on the car. You know, even down to things like the brake calipers, they've been machined, so they're lighter than the standard Renvo calipers. 
where some of the prior engines were able to be stripped, rebuilt. Yep. So that isn't the case with the Bosworth engine. You know, it's designed to be um, a sort of fairly regular maintenance engine. So can we check out some of the uh, gauges? Now is the 240 on the Speedo a reference to the McLaren F1? Or just uh, coincidental? I, I think it's coincidental. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty cool. I think so. They've got an aero mode, which is pretty cool. So when, when the fan's active on the car, it shows the current car speed of the fan, as well as the rear wing angle. Wow. You can the brake in certain settings, you get different angles on the fan. Thank you. So we are inside the driver's seat of the T50S now, and it actually has kind of a similar feel to my McLaren 600 LT in the fact that you are feeling like you're sitting over the front wheels and the roof line, the hood just slopes immediately downwards. It's almost like being in a go-kart, but with a heck of a lot more power. Obviously this car is way cooler than a 600 LT, but just a little comparison with the seating position there. Now we've got the beautiful transmission exposed here a whole bunch of different switch gear the engine start stop button flip up switch there infotainment controls the window controls actually you've got a decent amount of space in here because your passenger seats are behind you and to the side it feels very airy in the cabin I can't imagine what this is like to drive 13,000 rpms on the dash obviously revs to 12,100 Hopefully at some point I can take one of these out for a review. I love how unique the engine bay is. Look, it opens up almost like the doors on a Valkyrie, but just to expose the engine itself. They're about to start this up and take it for a drive. Look, the rear of it is taken off, exposing that massive engine. How cool is that air box on top? And then look how small the interior is with the single seat. 812 Competizione next to an almost matching spec F12 TDF. That is incredible. Look at that blue interior on a red car. Wild spec. Ferrari 312 race car. Look how low to the ground it is and that wedge-shaped design with the knockaducks. That is spectacular. Well guys, what an absolutely amazing event. First time ever getting to sit in and experience the T50 and hear the T50S in person. That sounded insane. It was actually so loud and so good sounding. I, I am in love with that brand. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Like always, please browse the channel and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you next video. Bye.